Hey there, Blade fans. Welcome back. And um, I wonder what we're going to do today. <laughs> well, I have my the only four push daggers in the collection out on the table. And we're going to talk a little bit about push daggers, their use, what they're good for, what they're not good for, and uh, maybe some of the special traits of each of these four. All but one are fixed blades and they do not fold, but that one that folds is pretty interesting. And we're going to be talking about that too. And a little bit of contrast between what these can do is, uh, as opposed to just a straight fixed blade or maybe even a folder. So here we go. <clears throat> and we're going to start <laughs> with the elephant on the table. This is the tops. I stick. Not E-Y-E, -E, but letter I, stick. This has got to be the most massive production push dagger on the market. And uh, the darn thing is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> should we measure? I don't want to measure too much today because I did reviews on all of these already, but I think it's worth taking a look at the thickness. It's 0.37 inches stock, so well over a quarter of an inch. It is just crazy. Uh, it's a beautiful knife. It is just massively thick and heavy. Well, how heavy is it? I guess in this case, we're going to uh, weigh it as well, only because it sets itself apart from the others with its size and its mass. We're talking about almost 13 ounces. So if I could exaggerate a little further, you've got nearly a pound of push dagger in your hand. I personally think it's excessive, but it's one of four push daggers I own. And I figure, what the heck? By the way, I had uh, got this on an auction on the Knife Junkie uh, maybe up to a couple of years ago in support of another uh, another uh, content provider on YouTube that was having a hard time financially at the time. So the money went to him and uh, hopefully he's doing better now. Nice red liner. It is a classy thing for its size. It's double edged. I don't have the cold steel. Years ago, I had the safekeeper and I think that's a pretty darn good push dagger. I just don't happen to have it in the collection. Uh, unique about this besides the size is the fact that it's kind of an asymmetrical handle. And assuming that I'm holding it upright uh, because I'm reading the letters, the lettering on the side properly. And by the way, it's 1095 tool steel as are most, if not, well, I would say most, not all, Tops knives. That... Um, it's sort of designed to be pinched here with the thumb, I would suppose. And um, it's best positioned on this one because we have four grooves for the fingers uh, between the middle and the third ring finger, which places it on line with the uh, forearm bones. So I think what I'll do is go through each of these, and then we'll talk about push daggers in general. That might be the best. Next down in size is the TKEL Tarani TQC, Tarani Close Quarters Triangle. And although they are not marketing this as a push dagger, because you notice the absence of the rest of the T handle that's typical of a push dagger up top, uh, I think for legal reasons, in various jurisdictions that prohibit push daggers. Um, they, or Steve Tarani did design it this way. And uh, I think he got some input from Tim Kell, maybe uh, according to Tim, and I had a conversation with Tim about this. Um, this was sort of all Mr. T uh, Steve Tarani's uh, doing here as far as the design goes. Uh, and uh, Tim pretty much carried it out and uh, collaborated with him in order to make it. Uh, so it is um, meant to be held this way, this way, 
this way, as well as this way between the first and the second fingers. Now, when you hold it in each of these positions, you don't always make use of each of the uh, finger grooves, uh, what have you. So they're there to accommodate the various other positions. So kind of a pistol grip here where you can poke with it, you can slice with it, feels actually not too bad. Uh, in the full push dagger grip, it doesn't feel super comfortable because this neck isn't really that skinny. And uh, it's a pretty thick stock. It's 1095 tool steel. It has the, uh, the TKL proprietary nickel boron finish, very slippery and uh, making it corrosion resistant. And it's uh, extremely hard. I think it's about a 72 Rockwell coating. So that is the TKL Tarani T TCQ. Uh, let's leave that guy for last. I picked this one up recently, kind of a nifty sheath, red on one side, black on the other. And uh, it's a very good sheath as far as uh, Bastinelli goes. Some of the Bastinelli sheaths are a little marginal, but this one's very good. Comes with a uh, ulti clip as part of the package. And uh, ulti clips, they're, they're a bit of a bear to clamp and unclamp. Can't always get at that tab, but once you slide it down, let's say into your pocket or your waistband, it isn't going anywhere. It's got a death, <laughs> death bite on the fabric. So um, aside from that, the sheath that came with the uh, TQ, TCQ, I keep wanting to say TQC, TCQ also has a, uh, a belt attachment plastic one that kind of clips over and these actually work pretty well tim uses them on a few of his other knives as well but let's get back to this one called the innocent no it's called the guilty <laughs> there is a smaller one from bastinelli called the innocent and if you uh, know bastinelli he's got that coin he sells uh that challenge coin that's got you flip it and it's got innocent on one side and guilty on the other oh, god forbid you've got to be judge jury and executioner with that I got to tell you, these are polar opposites. This compared to this, uh, this is a feather. This is nothing in your hand. It is a Magna Cut and it is USA made by Tactile Knife Company for Bastinelli. So uh, it's interesting that he's got a, a uh, USA OEM instead of a usual uh, Fox and uh, Lion Steel in Italy. So Magna Cut, USA made. Uh, Bastinelli, and this is very similar to a longer version that's slightly down curve that's made by Microtech for him called the B, and um, they are very hard to find. In fact, they come in a pair in a double holster that goes in the small of the back, and they're going for about like, I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars, some, some ridiculous thing. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm off on that. Maybe I'm off, but uh, there are a lot of money. <laughs> for a pair of them and they're serrated. Uh, this one I find to be very useful and we'll talk about each of them a little bit later on. This has a rich light, uh, black rich light handle, a nice thin shaft, fits between the fingers here perfectly. You could also hold it between the uh, middle and the ring fingers. Feels a little better for me this way as opposed to the eye stick which felt better between the middle and ring fingers. All right, we're going to put that back and get to the very last one. Believe it or not, yes, this is a push dagger. <laughs> it is designed by Ostop Hell, and uh, it is uh, has the name of a flower. And it's uh, part of a series that are named after flowers that Ostop Hell designed. Uh, it is called the Strelit, and the Strelit is um, I think another name for all or part of the bird of paradise flower, very beautiful tropical flower and bloom. Well, anyway, the, yes, this is a push dagger and probably the handiest of the bunch as far as carrying it goes. And yes, it can be used pushing as well as clawing as can, I would say all of them, but this one, is more of a claw. 
it is extremely lightweight, probably as light or lighter. Uh, feels about the same weight maybe as the guilty, guilty pleasure. <laughs> Uh, but let's talk in general about these push daggers. And, um, you know, a lot of people brush them off and say, uh, you know, it's not for me. It's uh, they don't work or they're specialized or it's a riverboat gamblers thing or it's for cowards. I've heard all of that. I don't know anybody that wants to draw a knife out to defend themselves in the, in the heat of the moment uh, is in my book, not a coward. But uh, are they making the best decision? I'm not sure. You know, is, um, many argue, is a pistol better than a knife? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if you watch a lot of uh, Tim Kell's videos, for instance, uh, there is uh, a lot of cause for carrying both because when you can't get to your sidearm quick enough, you got to get to something. And these would all fall into the classification of what Tim likes to call a get-off-me knife. And that's become kind of a generalized term now that I don't know if he adopted it first or uh, someone else did, but I think it's a, the concept is, is really, really good. Now, what can a push dagger do or not do that something like this uh, Street Beat by Spyderco, straight blade, very good one, by the way, very pocketable, very small three and a half inch uh, blade. Well, this is a little easier to do EDC chores with this. So if you're carrying a knife anyway, maybe you ought to be able to uh, use it for uh, daily cutting tasks, cutting rope, paper, envelopes, uh, food, food prep, what have you. It'll be a little easier to do it with this one. Although any of these, even the, the largest and uh, heaviest, you can Certainly, if you had to hold it in a manner, <clears throat> I don't know how with this one, maybe this way, maybe that's what that's for. Um, you can certainly cut and score with it. You can certainly slice. Um, I don't know how slicey it's going to be. It's a fairly steep bevel there. It does come through sharp. It's going to cut for sure. Uh, how well it's going to cut and for how long. I don't know, you know, how fine an edge, how slicey an edge you're going to get on that. This one's probably out of the question for just about anything, but, you know, a big, strong man who can handle almost a pound in his hand. Uh, I mean, the, the concept here was that the, 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 uh, the force going forward, the momentum with this thing is going to help drive it in. And certainly most push daggers are exactly for that, for pushing into a target. Um, many of these lighter ones are also good for cuts against uh, limbs. So somebody holding uh, another weapon, a stick, a knife, uh, punching, whatnot, you can go after uh, the Filipino concept of attack what attacks you or attack what's closest in your work, work your way in. That's a Dan and Asanto teaching from uh, long ago that I learned. Um, and the concept of defanging the snake. If uh, the hand is the snake holding a sharp implement or something, a bludgeon that's going to hurt you, you defang it by taking care of what attacks you. And then the hand no longer can hold a weapon, let's say, or no longer punch you, what have you. Um, as far as uh, this one goes, you do have maybe a little more ability than the eye stick to do some cutting chores. And I think it was designed as such. By the way, this is the um, Yorai Doshi, I believe, is the uh, blade design. There's like four blade designs in the, um, the triangle um, dagger there from uh, Tikel. However, I find something like the Guilty by Bastinelli here to be maybe most useful of all of these push daggers on the table in terms of, you know, cutting. So if you wrap a couple fingers around here and place your index finger here, you can very, uh, very easily cut things, even food, I would say. You've got a straight um, Warncliffe slash uh, sheep's foot sort of a blade. I would say maybe more Warncliffe because it's a longer one. It's got a straight edge. 
and it is a very sharp edge and it's a fairly tall grind for the, the height of the knife. Um, definitely lightweight. So that brings us to one of the other advantages of a push dagger is when you're carrying it inside the waistband, you have very little projection above there to poke you in the ribs or whatnot. Although we know that knives can be carried on an angle, appendix carry, kidney carry, so on and so forth to get that handle out of the way. But you don't have to accommodate that problem or solve for that problem with a push dagger because generally speaking, it's not as tall, right? You've got the blade, not as long as this one in this case, but you know, coming up on it, if you include the stem, about an inch shorter, right? So, but you've got a shorter, a shorter overall knife. So looking at the length of both of these, this is significantly shorter than even the very small uh, street beat and lighter weight, depending upon, of course, the push dagger. The uh, Strelit here by Ostop Hell and Best Tech, and by the way, I've got a fancier version of this in Damascus, but this would be the one I'd carry. I think this is in 14C. Let's see, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, 14C28N, so a good serviceable stainless. Uh, you could use this as well for cutting chores, but maybe, you know, you can't quite, you got to get over this and so forth. I mean, there's lots of ways you could uh, get creative in terms of cutting with it. Anything you put in your hand, if you got to cut with it, even if it's a sharp rock, you figure out how, you know, our, our cavemen forebearers uh, figured it out. So why can't we, right? And we've got a lot more technology we can use. Um so that's kind of my overview. Again, these are mainly defensive items. How good are they for defense? Well, if you can punch, the concept is then you can defend yourself with a push dagger. If you can hold it in your hand like this, and by the way, it's going to be a lot tougher to get out of your hand than something like this, where if you lose your grip, you drop the knife. With this, if you lose your grip, you've still got the knife. In fact, you can still use things like your palm. You can still grab things. Um, it's pretty handy, even more so than things with rings on them. I would say this is uh, a stage above a ringed knife, either a karambit drawer or otherwise. But, you know, it all depends upon what you practice with, what you're skilled with. Uh, knives like this, I think they may or may not come with a trainer. I know Bastinelli does make a larger knife. I forget the name of it at the moment. His largest push dagger that uh, does have a trainer available uh, with it. So, you know, if you can find a trainer and practice drawing and, and practice with a partner, you're going to gain a lot more understanding of each of these knives. Doesn't matter which one of them it is. But the concept of a push dagger, again, I feel this is pretty securely in my hand. These grooves here make it feel even more secure. And um, you wouldn't put it past Bastinelli to make a knife that isn't ergonomic. It's extremely useful and ergonomic. Well, there you have my uh, little bit of a treatise on push daggers, showing you four of them. There are, of course, many, many other push daggers out there. And uh, I do r highly rate the uh, Cold Steel series as well with the Craton handles and the double edges. Uh, I think they st are still called the safe keepers. But anyway, uh, no specs on these, and uh, I'll see if I can put some links to where they're available, provided they still are available. And uh, I know that uh, Tim still does have a stock of some of these. I know the Strelit's still available. I'm pretty sure the iStick is, and I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the Guilty is, as well as the Innocent, if you wanted an even smaller one. Okay, let me know what you think. Be well, take care. Coming back with some brand new knives uh, in the next few reviews.